Welcome to In Touch with God, a life transforming outreach powered by the Anglican verses of Amici. Relax and get set for an encounter with the matchless power of God as his anointed servant, the Right Reverend Ephraim Oikako, Bishop of the Anglican Diocese of Amici, ministers the undiluted word of God under the unction of the Holy Spirit. In the morning, you are blessed. In the afternoon, you are blessed. Any meeting, any gathering that we hold anywhere, physically or spiritually, that is not talking about your good and your blessing, may that meeting and gathering end in shame and confusion in the name of Jesus Christ. Your life and circumstances will never remain the same as you join us on this moment of refreshment and the presence of God. Remain blessed. Magdalene and colleagues, immediately they looked up. Their focus translated from failure and despair and depression to joy and testimony. Change your focus. Forget what is happening. Yes, ordinarily it may look difficult, but I'm telling you, God said, if you do it, I will help you. Again, why you should be serious with uh, focus is that your focus carries your faith. You can never operate an independent faith that is different from where you're focusing. There's one, one song we sing in our Kwerena Abonibo. Calvary, that song is saying, My faith, in other words, my focus is on you. Who is the you here? God, Jesus. So your focus is your faith. Wherever you focus, you focus controls your faith. Thirdly, your focus determines your faith. The first one is F-A-I-T-A. This one now is F-A-T-E. Your focus determines your faith. Your focus. When God was talking to the Jews through the prophet Jeremiah in chapter 17, read from verse 5. He said, Cost. Have you read it before? Jeremiah 17, 5. Cost is the man that puts his trust in another man. In other words, cost is that person that focuses on man for solution to his or her problems. That person is cost. That's the word of God. Number four, your focus makes you either a victim or a victor of your circumstances. Where you're focusing makes you either a victim because of where you're focusing. Or if you focus the right way, which is God, makes you a victor. There's something I use, I keep telling people about problems of life. When we were on social media last week, what the, the man, the person, I don't know whether it's man or woman, the person said, my friend, he just wrote it somewhere. My friend, find somewhere. Relax with friends and begin to laugh with them. No, be only you big get trouble. We are many in that trouble. We are many. So stop killing yourself. We are there many there. You think you have a problem. If I have your WhatsApp, WhatsApp 
numbers. There are some things I've been sending to some of you. You will even begin to confess your sin to God for not being grateful. For not being grateful. I saw one man, don't know whether he's a Chinese or a, or a Japanese, a born in Sydney. This man, I don't know what he's suffering from, but Okukoje, Okuko, Akeana, bad at that work. So Okukoje, bullet frying pan. And do bullet in a donya in a stove, yang raya, or coach, cha 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 cha. Where Oko trap ever? Maji, 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 don't want to go anywhere. Oh, 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 You are focusing on the financial ability of your parents. Oh, Papa, Mama, Can you, after this program, go into prayer? Say, God, from today, yes, you have given me father, mother, but my eyes are on you. Can you do it? And when you try to see what God can do, my uncles, Every one of you, 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 many of us, uncle is in London, he will help me. What if he doesn't? This morning I challenge everybody here. It may look very funny and difficult what I say, but you have no reason to be sad. No matter what it is. I saw another video clip. This one is a woman married to a man. <laughs> this woman just have one hand but Omar Okwa boy has two legs but one hand but this man that she's marrying has no leg in fact from here can you see bear the man from here he cannot walk he cannot do anything but two of them are married happily you see how they go for shopping or they want to go and do once they are ready which are up with they live happily but look at you in much viru nego korogi onu geta you are a greatless, I mean, ingrate. Ego koroge keta, onye me na abakose. Na rap maka, na rap maka kamsuike. Aruna abakage ka, onye tere tatasi. One only money. Go and spend. Somebody was telling me, that I'm talking about focusing on God who can do all things. I met a couple recently. They said they came back from UK. They went to see either their cousin or nephew or niece. I don't know. But their relation. They saw this man in the hospital. They wept bitterly. The man has a problem. I think it's either leukemia or something. Cancer of the blood. He said every day she's in that hospital. They will change blood for him transfuse it from whatever medical term, but each day they were paying 3,500 pounds every day. And they have been in that hospital for three months. Calculate it. Pounds, I said on 3,500 naira. So 1,000 pounds is about 1.1 million now. So each day they are paying about four point something million and they have been in that hospital for three months. And that day, quick, 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 qu
Your case is not hopeless, I challenge you. But to the greatest challenge this morning, try it. If you can consciously remove your focus from that problem and focus it on the solution who is God, you will come back here every month with testimony. Will you obey this money? Will you change your focus? Try, I sent something on my WhatsApp status, one of the things I sent yesterday. I said, nothing challenges God more than praising him in your difficult and ugly circumstance. Nothing challenges God like that. In no food in the house. I listened to a testimony a full gospel when I was preaching in full gospel on Sunday. There is nothing he cannot do. I know it before, but at times testimony will ginger you more. Testimony. There's nothing God cannot. Now what the Kelayan and Madu be? A more accident. Doctor says a court in a way option that the leg of this house help must be cut from here. And the woman is a believer living with the girl. He said to the doctor, Sir, with all apology, you won't cut off that girl's leg. And he said, This leg will rotten and destroy the whole body. He said, The woman was not telling the doctor what to do. He said, Cut off the bone that is crushed, that is here to here. Which one is this one, femur or what? What is it? The one from here to here. The woman said to the doctor, Operate on her, cut off the bone, but pull the muzzle down, leave it there. I give you three, six weeks. If nothing happens, cut off the leg. Focus. The woman is not a pastor, it's not a pastor's wife, so a Christian like you. Doctors, she mentioned the name of the doctor, not doctors that matter in this country. He said, Don't cut off the okay. I agree, you will cut off the leg, but leave it for six weeks. Weeks, and in the course of that crisis, the parents of the house help visited and said, We want to carry our daughter. To go to a native doctor anywhere. The woman said, you are not carrying this girl from my house. She's living with me and this accident happened in my house. And when the argument became too hot, you know what the parents said? We are going. If this girl dies in your house, you will pay. She turned and told them, yes, I will pay. But she will not die. Focus. After three weeks, the doctor, the Ogakpatakpata, said, Madam, I don't know. I am seeing something. He said, What are you seeing? He said, There, there seem to be bone coming out, fresh bone from inside. It could he be bone? He said, Doctor, that is bone. Relax. Instead of six weeks, exactly three weeks, bone grew from here, found the bone here, joined themselves, and the girl stood up. But how many of us have that kind of focus and faith? Because you cannot separate your focus from your faith. Focus, baby. The, the, the woman was looking up to Jesus. She refused to focus on the medical situation of the girl. Where are you focusing? Jordan. Problem over. Problem. True or false? So what's your why, why are you carrying your own? If you want, I bring out my own. I challenge you. Good. 
What keeps us going is focus and faith. God can do it again. And again. And again. <laughs> He's the same God today. <laughs> as he always has been. When? Yesterday. And today. And forever the same. There is no reason to doubt. God can do it again. I am looking at somebody that will change his or her focus. I'm going to go from next month. In a whatever, I know in a in a kata in a kata. I say, can you join me to sing? Heaven is a heaven is a heaven is a heaven is a my throne of hell. Only you are my hell. Somebody will sing that song. Yes, sir. Can you change your focus? Mary Magdalene. Mary, the mother, mother of James. Salome, we are looking at the stone, the ceiling of the tomb. But the Bible says, but when they looked up, can you look up from today? Not temporal looking up. Wake up in the morning. Do what? Look up. Walk along the street. Do what? Look up. When you lay down, look up. No matter what you hear about Tunumbu and his people, look up. When you remember the wickedness of politicians in Nigeria, do what? Look up. Look up. That was what saved these three women. When they looked up, wrong focus will keep you in a problem that has been solved by God. Wrong focus. When they were focusing on the tomb, on the stone, on the ceiling of the stone, they were celebrating problems that have already been solved. It was when they looked up, the Bible said, and when they looked up, they saw that the stone they were worrying about has been rolled away. Do you know that doubt can sustain your problem not longer than necessary? Doubt and fear. Especially in this age of philosophy. I'm not following Hendoka Neku <laughs> because they were using Doka, but only how they represent. They are talking about forget God, forget what God is saying. My brother, I respect every science. Quite for science, the scientists are gift from God. But once their interest and knowledge clashes with the power of God, I suspend science. That's me. And that has kept us going. That has kept us going. As we prepare to pray, there are things I also want you to know about focus. I said, your focus makes you either a believer or a doubter. Where you are focusing will either make you a believer or a doubter. Because if you look at what Jesus told Peter in Mark, Matthew chapter 14 verse 31, when Peter was sinking because he removed his focus from Jesus and was focusing on the water and the sea and the, the wind. The Bible says, and Jesus stretched forth his hand and pulled Peter up and put him on ground. And he turned to him and said, why do you doubt, old man of little faith. Which means it was Peter's focus that made him a doubter. The question I'm asking as we pray is where is your focus? Where is your faith? What do you trust now? There was something they were saying before the uh, 
or the presidential election petition tribunal. The week, they were two weeks to the delivery of their judgment. They were saying something. I never agreed to that thing. What would they, everybody was say? They even printed T-shirt and it was a slogan. Do you remember the slogan? All eyes on the judiciary. I never said it for one day. Nigerian judiciary is not my focus. Once I see somebody that says, all eyes on judiciary, I say, lie. My own eyes are on God. And you have seen what judiciary did. But may I announce to you, Nigerians, whether you are here or not, God has not finished with the case of Tunumbu. Relax. I keep on telling people, the God I serve doesn't fight preliminary battle. Or recruit now, look preliminary. If you remember one of the prophecies he gave us in January 1 last year, he said, I will allow the wicked to get to the peak that they will conclude nobody can stop us. He said, then I will strike. Do you remember that prophecy? Prophetic prayer breakfast. He said, I will allow the wicked. That's where they are headed now. On a head, cup it and why why? The Nigeria a certificate, it doesn't matter about that school. With the same judge the car because one somebody thinks it's already Bogolo go we give a judge. How can you dismiss a heavy case? Forget the merit of the case. You're talking of technicality. George de Kono, we rule one nenya, ordering the Chicago State University. To release every academic record to Numbutu article. Manenya, Oga Hesu. Kimbe, Madugu Chalaoko, as he see release a result, a kafu, or bakuko, si se me kwana. Oh, tis a man kegi. So when you allow the, they think money is everything. He think he's richer than Nigeria, he's richer than everybody. He buys judiciary, buys senate, buys a uh, house of reps, buys ministers. Everybody's talking nonsense. Jehovah non eli nanya. Very soon, there will be a shaking. Mbende mada ato anya ke zendie zegabata. Me Jesus batara o. He led the legabo. Jesus, Touch somebody say don't change your focus negatively. Change it focus, change it positively. Rap yena to gebu. What should you do?
Your focus decides your destination in your life's journey. Your focus decides your destination. When you woke up to come for prayer breakfast, it was where you were focused. Maybe you were riding on your bike or you were driving your car. or It was where you were going. I mean, focusing, that determines where you will arrive. If you got up now and you know Cathedral Church of St. Andrew is in this direction, and you got to a car meet and continue to Oga, you will arrive at Oga. So your focus decides your destination in life's journey. Focus on God. That's my appeal this morning. And that's what my father said I should encourage you. Forget what anybody is threatening you. Maybe you are a civil servant. Somebody said, over my dead body, will you be promoted here? And you are shivering because you are focusing on the man that spoke it. You don't focus on the person that gave him breathing and nauseous. No one came at his got up in sleep in the night and God will close the two nose and they will not breathe again. A lecturer was harassing a girl. I shared this story so much. The girl was focusing on the lecturer. Final year med medical student. The professor, very shameless, cost man. Why did I say that? You know why I describe him that way? He's a 67 year old man. Forcing a girl of 22 that you must sleep with me. That if you don't sleep me, sleep with me, you can never graduate from university. Go and ask others. I'm not hiding it. And it was his, his way. Messing beautiful young girls with future up with contaminated blood. Only 67, then only 20. Overall contamination. The girl wept when she was about to enter into her final MBA exam. Final. She came and said, Daddy, I was a venerable dad. Daddy, I'm in trouble. I'm in trouble. I said, what is it? She narrated this story. I said, what is troubling? He said, I have verified. That is how he had messed other girls up. And if you refuse, you will keep on. She takes us out of about six courses in their final year. The man is taking three. So if he fails you in three, there's nowhere you are going. The girl was weeping. I said, why are you crying? Young girl, forget the lecture. I said, daddy, how can I forget him? I said, forget that man. I will link you up this morning. I said, kneel down. She knelt down. I said, father, this girl is born again. And she doesn't want to defy herself. And this wicked man, have presented himself. May you defend both your daughter and your name in your own way. I didn't tell him to kill. The girl entered into the exam. The man was demon possessed. You know, even on an agnostic, in my own neighbor, final exam. In GBD day here, the professor Bianantia, if you like, write like a professor, you must fail. Inside the exam hall, the girl became scattered. She managed to write that paper and ran straight to the vicarage where I was. I said, Daddy, see what happened today. I said, But did you write? He said, I managed to write. And the man's paper is coming tomorrow again. I said, kneel down again. Father, defend both your daughter and your name in your own way. I didn't make a very good man. The over one who to kill and who not to kill. That glorious morning, 9 a.m., the, the lady told, they were seated, and the man drove parked by the side of the exam hall, carried the answer, uh, question paper, and answer, was ma walking in majestically. Just at the entrance of the exam hall, she stood, he stood, started vibrating, and feel dizzy, dizzy, and was about to fall to the ground. 
The other two professors around rushed and held him. He became unconscious. They carried him inside the car, collected the question paper and the answer script, started administering the exam, carried him to hospital. So the sister wrote that day without the man. And the last day, after three days, when they were write the man's last letter, they were inside the hall, and the news came that he had died. Don't mess up with a child of God. God can never joke with a covenant child. Don't try it. This lady, this boy, this man of God is under covenant with God and you are trying to mess him up. God will mesmerize you. I say, remove your eyes from lecturer. Who is lecturer? A man in whose breath is in his nostrils. I have a God who controls the lecturer. If he lies, he takes his life. If he lies, he gives him back. And that year, God decided to take his life. Change your focus. You have no reason to be sad. Young girl, 35, 38 years, even 40, no husband, and you are worried. Worry cannot give you a husband, but God will. Worry cannot give you money, but God will. You know what he told the Israelites? He said, in, I think that is Deuteronomy chapter 8, 18. He said, I am the Lord that giveth you power to make wealth. Some of you think born again is synonymous with poverty. If you want to be rich, don't be a casual born again. What kills many of us is this nonsense born again, fluctuating born again, dancing born again with our character. Be a covenant born again child of God. Under heavy covenant with God. You will never be a failure. Change your born again status. This thing you are doing, small time, compromise, small time. No. We want to pray. Mary Magdalene, when they looked up, and this is what David, we will now pray with that. David suffered so many things, fought many battles. His life was in danger. When he came to a point that he didn't know what to do humanly again, he wrote Psalm 121. I want to pray with it. Psalm 100 and what? 21. Open to it. I want to pray for it. And I will show you what David said. When you look up to God, change your focus and focus on God, you will see about eight things that will happen to you. Psalm 121. We are praying with it. Are you there? Verse 1. He took a decision. David took a decision. And that's the decision I want you to take this morning. What was his decision? He said, I will lift up my eyes to the hills. From whence comes my hell. He began to enumerate. I'll show you as I read. I point out eight things that happens to any man, any woman, any boy, any girl, any pastor, any preacher that looks up to God. Changes your focus from your circumstance. You have labored in God's vineyard where you are and there seems not to be a result and you are getting depressed. No way. Change your focus from that depression and focus on who called you. Focus on who called you. God has given you children. They are in school. Paying their school fees. Now they have become an uphill task. Change your focus from the school fees and the financial challenge. Go back to God. Tell him, you tell me to take care of my children. You know, some of us don't know how to challenge God with the Bible. If you want to pray that prayer, I say, God, in 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 8, you told me something. That he who does not provide for his family is worse than an unbeliever. Therefore, do you want me to be an unbeliever? Give me money to pay my children's school. Move God with his word. He said, I watch over my word to perform it. But some of you can pray for three hours without quoting one scripture. A coronaga. 
Abra, 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 Once you look up to God, David said, the first thing is that your help will start coming from God and not man. That's the first thing. Your help will start coming from God and not man. Number two, David goes on to say, verse three, I mean, he will not allow your foot to be moved. When you look up to God in every circumstance, you will become immovable by circumstances. Circumstances will no longer move you around. Some of us, if you for the Abagari ministry backyard, but you are looking at your circumstance, you refuse to look up. Once you look up, circumstances will make you immovable. You cannot run around because God will take care. Number three, he said the same verse. He who keeps you will not slumber. Behold, he who keeps Israel shall neither slumber nor slay. When you look up to God, God watches over you continually in every situation you pass through. And you know what it means to watch over you? You think God will allow you to sink. It's not true. In Mark chapter 4, that day, the, the storm was too much. And the disciples and they began to cry, Lord, carry us down all that we perish. Jesus, Bible said, was sleeping inside the same boat. How did they think they would sink? At the right time, he showed up. I said, he rebuked the wind and the sea and said, peace, be still. The next thing you say, and there was a great calm. This morning, as many as we trust God after this program, I speak as a servant of God. God will calm every storm in your life. God will calm every storm in your health. God will calm every storm in your finances. God will calm every storm in your academics. God will calm every storm in your ministry. God will come every storm in your marriage in the name of Jesus. Number four. Once you look up to God, David reminds us God becomes your keeper. He will not only watch over you, but he will do what? Keep you. There is this Igbo adage. If that will happen because of human being, what do you think over somebody God is keeping? I say, no, okay. Why don't you see Now God becomes your keeper. And the Bible tells you, this one keeping you, he never sleeps, nor slumber. He doesn't go on sabbatical. He doesn't change position. He doesn't change, you know, throne. You know, as at about two years ago, if we be a be motona gana nambra convoy or a as in onion abatana bo a poko global. A chichi a go go na kwe. A kana poko. Because what what am I bringing out? Tenor, human tenor must end. But this your keeper has no tenor. From everlasting to everlasting to everlasting, he is in charge. Can you touch yourself? My father is in charge. This is what gives me joy. One day, Canada General University, I was working as an undergraduate. One girl, one of these things they call Slay Queen, as Slay Mom and Pepe Den Gang. I was walking, going for my lecture. This lady walked up to me and said, Excuse me. I said, What is it? He said, I've been watching you in this university. Every time you keep on walking as if your father is the owner of this university. Who are you? I said, It's a queen. Nothing concerned two of us. My, my friend, what is your problem? He said, but I keep on watching you every time. You walk as if you're father. I said, you know, no. 
My father is not owning the university. My father owns the world. I am a child of the king. You want me to walk like a beggar? My father is the Elohim. They are yam that are yam. The Alpha and the Omega. He that was and desires to come. The only lion that no weapon can kill. The lion of the tribe of Judah. The great provider. He can never run out of resources. He provides for me. I said, so why can't I watch majestically? Which means he then you cheer up. Cheer up, that's the challenge. Cheer up, forget what you are hearing. Whatever you hear, tell them, my father. I will tell my father what you have done to me today. In verse 5, David went ahead to say it. The fifth thing that happens to you when you look up to God. He said, the Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade at your right hand and your... So when you look up to God, he becomes your shade and your shelter. Shade and shelter. Whatever that is killing others. You know, when you look at the Bible, you've been correct. Do you know it was the same flood? That wiped away humanity. The same flood was carrying Noah and his family up. That's for you. For me, now now I go be rich. Now now, my father doesn't work miracle where things are normal. When there is abnormality, that's where my father shows up. And he will show for you. Yeah. I say, God will show for you. Yeah. Can you change your focus? The, few, the sixth thing that happens, when you look up to God and change your focus, and, and you look at it, he said, the Lord will preserve your going out and you are coming in. Abby? No. Verse 6. Look at verse 6. The sun shall not smite you or strike you by day, nor the moon by... When you look up to God, no circumstance will overwhelm you. No circumstance will ever overwhelm you, no matter how terrible. Let me challenge students here. They tell you, oh, this cause is almighty. And now your prayer is, well, God, please, the only thing I want in this course is let my people go. Go where? It's just, Lord, if you can only give me minimum of 40. No. After my first degree, I went to theological school where I did my postgraduate studies. And there was this course. They said, no, no, but not course. They said, nobody that had finished secular university and came into the theological school that ever graduates with first class or distinction because that you people didn't study the basics of theology from year one. I say, said who? They say, you know, in the my family, that it has never happened. I was, I was disturbed. I was troubled. I said, it has never happened. It will happen in my case. I go and sit down. After our studies, the day the final result on our graduation was pasted, the question changed from Odemebu to how did it happen? I have to go with my distinction and first class. It's a matter of where you're looking up to. My father said, I will give you more understanding than your teachers. And somebody is teaching me this subject or cause, and you say, I will not excel. You are a joker. And the scripture tells me that when the Holy Spirit comes into me, he will teach me all things. It's not only Bible. Some of you will say, he will teach you Bible. No. All things, subjects, anatomy, physiology, whatever. But do you have him? Sin is a tranquilizer and destroyer. 
Second to the last point, I think. Number seven, Abby. Look at verse seven. David said, The Lord shall preserve you from all evil. Whenever you look up to God, what you'll be hearing is the evil that happened to people. But God will always preserve his own, those that look up to him. When you go and look at the word preserve, open in this um, juice, juice, five alive, chivita, and so You know, there are some you will get. They will say a little preservative added. Do you see it? Do you know the duty of preservative? To keep that thing that it will not sour or rotten or become until the appropriate time. And he has said, when you look up to God, he will become your preservative. <laughs> you cannot run out of miracle. You cannot run out of favor. You cannot run out of finance. You can look, the problem is not with God. Our work with God is too wobbling. Wobbling is not strong. David said, he will preserve you, not only you, he will also preserve your soul. And finally, verse 9. Amen. Verse 8. The Lord shall preserve your going out and your coming in from this time forth, even forever more. The Lord will give you unconditional security provision and providence that's why we are ending that's what happens to you the lord when you look up to him he will give you unconditional security unconditional prov providence and unconditional provisions can you trust this god get in our map with you man we want to pray so this is what the lord said challenge them Many of them are so depressed. No, many of you are no more happy. Many people are just walking, just for walking sake. Every day, Satan will plaster your brain with problems and challenges. And you look up to them. Can you change your focus today? Can you? Talk to that your neighbor again. Change your focus. Stand up and let us pray. Something new will happen this month. Can you close your eyes? Now the hour has come. I want to pray. You have prayed. You've handed over to my father. It is there for my father to intervene. Just lay your right hand on your chest. Your duty now is amen. Where you ought to say amen. In Jesus name we have prayed. Amen. Father I stand in this holy office. Of a bishop not by merit but by your grace in the office of a prophet and a high priest and I lift my hand unto these people whom you have brought to us to bless physically and virtually joining in this program Lord like Mary Magdalene Mary the mother of James and Salome Whatever is that stone, whatever that stone represents in any life here, which have been bothering these people, troubling them, giving them sleepless night. Lord, I lift my hands as you've commanded. As they leave this temple of yours, they will get home. They will not see that stone again. Father, whatever stone of financial crisis, stone of hardship, sickness, barrenness, whatever it is, struggling with our success, I stand on this office, I command all those stones, be rolled away in the name of Jesus. Be rolled away in the name of Jesus. Be rolled away in the name of Jesus. And according to the reporter and the writer of the gospel, according to St. Matthew, verse chapter 28, 
Lord, when they looked up to you, even though the soldiers were there with their weapons to prevent your intervention, the Bible said, when you decided to come down, there was earthquake. Lord, anything hindering anybody from assessing his or her miracle, let there be divine earthquake. <laughs> Father, may this divine earthquake crush that thing in the name of Jesus Christ. <laughs> Father, from now, let hindrances to miracle be removed. <laughs> this is freedom prayer breakfast. Whatever is holding anybody to ransom and captivity, I command freedom. I command deliverance. I command liberation. I command divine restoration. May God whom you trust from today, may he answer you. In this time of challenges in our country, may the Lord show up for you. Yeah. What no man can do for you, I pray from this morning, the Almighty God will do it for you. Yeah. Where there was hopelessness before you came, as you leave this holy sanctuary, receive hope, yeah. receive joy, yeah. receive victory, yeah. receive your testimony. Receive your testimony. Receive your testimony. Receive your own testimony. Receive your own testimony. Whether they like it or not, receive your testimony. Irrespective of your foundation, receive your testimony. Irrespective of your family background, receive your testimony. Irrespective of the amount of money in your business, receive your testimony. You will not continue as before. You came here with sadness, you must go with joy. You came here with fear, you are going with faith. You came here disturbed, you are going home glorious. In this time of difficulty, I connect you to divine resources. The economy of our nation is failing. Therefore, the economy of heaven will not fail you. May this God whom you have decided and vowed to focus on, he will never disappoint you. At the right time, the Lord will show up for you. Every battle that is confronting you, the Lord is taking it over. He will fight for you. You will hold your peace. He will give you victory. Those that are looking at you to fail will be ashamed of themselves. Those that are preparing to laugh at you because of the way things are. Very soon, I declare, I declare, I declare. Very soon, they will have no option than to come and laugh with you. Finally, as you focus on God this morning, I pull by divine anointing and unction. I pull off from you the garment of shame. I pull off from you the garment of failure. I pull off by anointing in the name of Jesus the garment of poverty. The garment of hardship. The garment of hatred. The garment of premature death. The garment of infertility. The garment of delay in your marriage. Let them be off now. Let them be torn off now. Let there be a new beginning. 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 For everybody here, new beginning. For every family, new beginning. For every ministry, no new beginning. 
for every career new beginning for every marriage new beginning for every health no beginning new beginning new beginning in the name of jesus october listen to me you were created by god to serve us i command you every calamity every disaster every sad news you have you have been carrying i warn you and i command you you will never bring into any of these people here October, listen to me, you have ears. Before my father, there is no inanimate object. You have ears. October, you will bring good news. You will bring miracles. You will bring security. You will bring excellence. October, you will be a month we will lay the foundation of our jubilation. Thank you, Father. Lord, I pray for all that we are born in this October. If you were born in October, you are celebrating anything in October, I pray for you. The Lord will bless you. The Lord will cause you to fulfill your destiny. You will not die before the manifestation of your miracle. No power can diversify or deviate or truncate your miracle. Because the Lord has brought you, brought you into this world in the month of October, this month he will give you a special gift. The Lord will favor you. The Lord will set to you. The Lord will protect you. The Lord will open new door for you. The Lord will draw you closer to himself. The Lord will make you to hate sin. You will love righteousness. Blessed be your name, Lord. As we give you our special gift and offering this morning. Father, bless the offerers any hand that would drop either online or here lord may that person drop all his or her sorrows any offering that we give in to you this morning we open new channels of blessing nobody that will drop any offering this morning will lack any good thing this month receive this offering as sweet smelling savour and may they always speak good things on behalf of your children that give them. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. Amen. Unto him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly, more than you think or imagine, the immortal and invisible God, the only potentate, he that opens and nobody closes. Unto him I commit all of you. I commit your family. I commit everything concerning you. And I declare as a high priest, may the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you. May the Lord be gracious to you. May the Lord make way for you where there is no way. May he heal your diseases. May he grant you peace. May he give you joy. May he give you that which the world cannot give. May he preserve your going out and coming in. In the name of God the Father. The name of God the Son. The name of God the Holy Spirit. Lord, I stand in the midst of a multitude Of those from every tribe and town